being on a team of men and then me being a minority female on top of that mm. you know i wow. had ideas and they dismissed them because i have been in that boat where i was just a little black girl didn't yeah. matter how many degrees or whatever when i walk in i'm the little black girl i have spent my life proving myself because i am the little black girl and, you know, I have to let them know that this little black girl can do a lot more than what you think she can do. Okay. Hey, 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 Entre Leaders. Happy Wednesday and welcome to the 49th episode of the Leaders Lab podcast. This is, this is unbelievable. This is so amazing. I am, I'm just thrilled and honored, y'all. We are getting closer to the 50 episode mark uh, and this is a weekly podcast. So that actually means a great deal to me. Um, and I've, largely been able to do this because of the most recent series that I have been doing life after doctor. I have had some of the most amazing men, um, on, on my show, but, uh, I know some women <laughs> who have doctor in front of their names as well. And I know many of you probably have been like, Oh, all of these men, where are the women at? Listen, I save the best for last. You hear me? I bring the women on after I let the men come and talk and, and today's guest, Oh, today's guest, I have been uh, watching her. We are actually colleagues, um, as you'll see in a moment. We're colleagues because we graduated from the same institution. Um, but I have, I have been watching her and admiring her metamorphosis on social media over the past couple of years. And I mean, I've seen her go just from a brand to a business. Like this woman is amazing. And I am talking about none other than the Dr. Ikena Finch. She is a podcaster, social media coach, and speaker. She coaches in the areas of empowerment, life, and social media at the individual and group levels from her company, Finch & Associates, LLC. She is the co-host of the Motivate Social podcast broadcasted by her company, Changing Minds Online. She speaks and live streams on the topics of motivation, education, and social media. In 2018, she founded the Social Power Summit, an event with a live and virtual component for women in STEM and people of color in social media to have a platform where they can shine. For more information, you can go to socialpowersummit.com to check out more about her summit. Also, Dr. Finch is the co-author of eight books. She launched her first solo project, Motivation Ignited, in November of 2016 and compiled her first anthology project, Empowerpreneurs, in February of 2020. She is a contributor for Huffington Post, Goldcast, Forbes, and Thrive Global. She has been interviewed and featured on Huffington Post, Hello Beautiful, Women Speakers Association, International Coach Federation, and many others. She has spoken on many platforms to include ICF Tennessee Chapter, Periscope Summit, Women in Leadership Summit, the Success Women Summit, the Business Blog Summit, and many more. She can be found all across social media as at Dr. A.D. Finch. <laughs> and uh, you'll see that in a moment, I will make sure that I put all of her contact details in the description box and in the show notes below. Now, not just all of everything that she does as a, as a uh, businesswoman, as an entrepreneur and on social media, but Dr. Finch is an educator. She received a doctor of management, an MBA in technology management, and an executive MBA from Colorado Technical University. She has an MS in management and marketing and an MS in information systems and IT project management from Strayer University and a BS in Aeronautical Technology in Industrial Electronics from the School of Engineering of Tennessee State University. She is a former campus and faculty dean that established enrollment records at three campuses. Her teaching disciplines include business, leadership, marketing, 
social media, and information systems at the graduate and undergraduate levels. Also, she has published and presented on topics related to youth and adult education, social media, and job search. Without further ado, Entre Leaders, please help me give a big Leaders Lab welcome to Dr. Ikena Finch. Hello and welcome to the Leaders Lab, ma'am. Hello, how are you? I am so excited to be here. Oh, listen, I, I must say that, you know, for the first woman doctor, okay, for the first woman of doctor to come on the Leaders Lab as a guest, I had to make sure that it was somebody who I could relate to, somebody who I look up to, somebody who is doing big things. I mean, seriously, I have been watching you over the past couple of years and how we started out in the same, see, now I'm about to actually tell on myself because we started out in many of the same circles and um, in Facebook groups and things like that. But I wasn't as consistent. Y'all don't judge me, okay? I've changed a lot now. I'm doing much better. But I wasn't as consistent as you are. And now look at everything that you are doing. It's motivating, but then it's also, it's like, it's a rebuke. <laughs> it's a rebuke to me because it's like, if you would have been consistent, and you would have been doing what you're supposed to be doing, then you could also have progressed in the way. But I mean, wow, you're amazing. You are so phenomenal. And I appreciate you for being on the on the Leaders Lab today. Well, I appreciate you for, you know, thinking of me. You know, um, I love to share my story. And, you know, sometimes it's so funny because people are like, you've done all these things. And I'm just like, I'm just being me. And so I love the fact that, you know, you have done great things as well. And I've been following you, you know, I haven't left the, I haven't left the United States, you know, to live. I, I've left for a little bit, but not to live. So, you know, you, you got me on that one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Y'all know how I rock with China. Lord have mercy, keep me Jesus in China. So you have been doing so many things. Um, you have several certifications. You have been a success when it comes to, to s doing virtual summits. You have done also live summits as well. Um, and as I was, I was on your website, you know, preparing for today's segment, I was on the, your website and I saw that you did, uh, you also did a summit with the platform that I use for, for podcasting, which is, um, with StreamYard, I, I was like, now wait a minute. Wow. I mean, to me, I feel like that's a high, but, but I won't, I won't assume what your highs and lows have been. So share with us what have been some of your highs and lows after receiving your doctorate, because you you have an amazing story. So, you know, you tell us, some, share some of your story with us and then tell us what have been some of the highs and lows. Well, I received the doctorate at 31. And so at thir 31, I became a dean at 32. And so I'm at sorry, wait, 30... wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, 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 I don't think I heard you correctly. <laughs> Say, because I'm, I'm not, I don't really understand the words that are coming out of your mouth right now and they're English. So... <laughs> Um, did you just say you received your doctorate at 31 and then you became a dean at 32? Yes. And then no, at 35? You're not just brush over that. No. <laughs> no. No, Dr. Finch. No, ma'am. You cannot just brush over that. Like, excuse me? Like, you know you're going to have to share that. You're going to have to share that, that story. So you can continue okay. to tell us the progression, but I need to know... What type of prayer did you send up to heaven? <laughs> well, so I received my doctorate in June of 2009. And then I kept working. I was working for uh, the government uh, as a contractor. Uh, I was helping soldiers find jobs. And I was excelling very well at that. I was uh, building my social media presence and all the things and really building the following and all of that. And that's where my social media business came from. Well, in the process, my friend uh, slash mentor got tired of me still working there. And so he started sending me jobs. <laughs> and he sent me one and it said, uh, the... A caption said, apply, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. And it was for a dean for on-site campus 
in a Verizon call center. And I said, okay, let's do this. Uh, at that time, they were probably 10 deep. At that point, by the time I left, they were 30 deep. I went to the interview. He told me all the things I'm supposed to say and all the things, you know, and he sent me on my merry way. So they can't, they flew me out and they uh, told me I had all this PowerPoint presentation and all the things. And they sent me a flip chart and said, okay, let's go. I said, oh, no, ma'am. <laughs> I said, I got a PowerPoint presentation. I, you know, we, we doing this. You know, because I was supposed to teach a lesson. She said, well, then turn it on then. I said, I shall. And then we got to uh, teaching. And then they asked me questions. And I was like, by the end of it, I said, I hope I answered your questions uh, sufficiently. And they were like, oh, yes. She says, all I have is one more question. You know, where do you want to go? Do you like the cold or do you like the hot? I said, I, uh, I'm from Colorado. I don't want no more snow. You need to send me somewhere hot. <laughs> And the next thing I know, December of 2010, I was the dean for the Irvine, California campus. And wow. from there, I became the dean, went to, uh, spent a year in Irvine, went to Alabama, Huntsville, spent about two years there. And then at 35, I became the, uh, a new position came up where you could be a faculty dean. So basically over schools. And I was offered the position for the whole uh, School of Information and Technology. And when they told me how many people I had up under me, uh, I ended up, when it was all said and done, 515 faculty up under me. And with 155 programs, uh, that's IT programs, plus 15 programs for criminal justice. And I was 30... I was third, but that happened between 35 and 37. Lord, I'm 36 years old. What am I doing? <laughs> oh my God. That is mm -hmm. so incredible. You seem like you have a whole lot of highs as soon as you finish with your doctorate. I mean, you just, it just seemed like your, your promotion and your elevation literally just kept happening, going, 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 going. So then I decided I wanted to go home because these were jobs that I could stay at home and work. So, I uh, went home and then I uh, went to Tennessee and then I ended up becoming the dean of the Tennessee campus. So I had the full uh, Tennessee Nashville campus up under me. And then um, I moved from uh, from that university and then I moved to a new university, American Public University System. And that's when I had my absolute dream job. I've been there five years uh, as of October okay. 3rd. And okay. it is faculty training developer. So basically, I get to train wow. faculty how uh, in professional development and I get to teach them how to be coaches. With my, because I am an ICF certified coach. So it just kind of works with what I do. So now I get to train faculty how to be great. I have not seen a student wow. in five years. <laughs> no. First of all, why do you sound so excited? <laughs> why do you sound so excited about that? <laughs> no, he is no. excited. Uh, no, that, no wow. but, I mean, faculty are my, are my students. You know, yes. I love teaching them how to become coaches, how to use those coaching skills in their classrooms, how mm -hmm. I also talk about social media and pre uh, their presence there, how they can leverage that, how they can let people know all the things that they're doing. In addition, I'm now the uh, lead, lead chair for the uh, curriculum subcommittee for our EDI task force, which most people would call DEI. But yes, mm -hmm. I run the curriculum one. We have five of them and uh, mine is the largest committee. And wow. in, the, in addition to that, we now have podcasts called Inclusive View for the faculty and staff there, as well as I'm doing podcasts for the university for leading forward. So I'll be talking to the heads of the uh, DEI task force, talk, uh, interviewing the provost, things of that nature about different things that are affecting uh, faculty and leadership across the board. So look forward to them. So that's some of the highs. That? Oh my God. I mean, your highs are really high. Like, <laughs> I'm 
sitting there listening. I'm like, this is Matt. This is, it's wow. This is marvelous. And so those are some of the highs, but uh, now I, I don't know if, is it, is your story one of the ones where it's like, um, you know, the higher you go, the, the more highs you experience, the stronger the lows, the lower the lows, or <laughs> what have your lows been like? You know, like, I mean, cause you, you got some high highs now. Okay. I experienced lows even uh, right out the gate. Being on a team of men and then, you know, me being a, uh, minority female on top of that mm. you know i wow. had ideas and they dismissed them and i had some more ideas and they dismissed them and then at the end of the quarter when i became the highest ranking dean in the area then they were interested in hearing my uh, my ideas in fact for my campus i grew it by 40 percent in three months so and so, you know, they were kind of interested in my ideas at that point. But they, they had the opportunity before, but they just, yeah. they overlooked you because you are a woman. Yeah, basically, basically. I had no sense, you know, you know, they were all older and, and you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what I Now also, was it, do you, do you think that, uh, that, you know, your, your race also played a factor into it? Oh, of course, of course, of course. I remember when I did the meet and greet and one of my students as my friend calls it wrote me a scroll about how he was taken aback by my age <laughs> and i said well sir according to my degrees the university that hired me i am perfectly capable of taking care of your educational needs <laughs> just give me a chance so he had a problem because you were younger correct and let me get this straight so you had you had keep in mind i was some low, you ex you experienced some lows just because of three factors your your age your race and your gender Thanks. this is the world we live in huh but yet you still showed up you didn't take you know you didn't let that cause you to to shrink back if anything i feel mm -hmm. like it made you i feel like it made you bust out even more be like well i'm here oh, yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah yeah and, oh it, it gets worse so when of course they announced me being the person who is running uh, the whole IT department, you know, for faculty. And mm -hmm. uh, we had to start. So they used that, that example to clean house. And so I had to go through and check some people and, you know, I had to, you know, call some people out and some things. And this person took me all the way to the president, knowing that they were wrong, but they took me all the way to the president and you know, this woman is vindictive and she's this and she's that. And I said, hold up. <laughs> I I called my bosses. I said, y'all gonna fix this or am I? I said, you know, because I'm like, look, I am doing what you told me to do. And now I'm getting reported in my first week to the president of the university. What you gonna do? In your about first it? week. In my first week. See, you know, that'll let you know. You don't apologize. experience some highs. That that mm -hmm. lets you. I'm 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 gonna. I just have to interject real quick. That lets you know. Yes. You all the all the things, the glitz and glam, and the and the and the accolades and praises that we give to people for the things that they accomplish. You have to understand that there are definitely some loads that they have had and some hurdles that they have had to overcome just to get to where you know to that point to where we're like, oh my god, you're so amazing. I can't believe this. That right there. Within the first week. Now, can you be honest? Certainly. Can you be honest? How many of you entre leaders would have been able to hold your composure, continue on in a professional manner without it, you know, without, you know, making the whole thing look bad? Oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm sorry. My interjection is over. Please continue. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then, then they decided to, cause we were all in one pile and then they decided that they were going to shift us out to the schools. So that the deans were were our boss. Woo wee! That was something interesting there. <laughs> Man, so but eventually I grew to love my dean, and he grew to love me. But you know, he he just needed to figure out what was going on. <laughs> you know, you go through changes, but all these changes make you stronger. It makes you ready for the battle to, that's next to come. You know, he's not going to give you more than you can bear. And sometimes when you're getting it, you're surprised that you can bear. You know, a lot of the situations that you're given are there to let you know 
that you may be in, but you're not going to break. Come on now, church. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, she said you might bend, but you're not going to break. I love it. Right. So after you have continued to experience uh, the mixture of lows and highs, lows and highs, how do you feel like it has prepared you for what you now do? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it let me know about diversity in individuals and the struggles that others go through. Uh, I see people as individuals now and not necessarily race, creed, color, what, you know, all the things. Mm. Uh, I mm -hmm. see them for who they are because I have been in that boat where I was just a little black girl. Didn't yeah. matter how many degrees or whatever, when I walk in, I'm the little black girl. I have spent my life proving myself because I am the little black girl. And, you know, I have to let them know that this little black girl can do a lot more than what you think she can do. Okay. And so, you know, I have been fighting for years because you know, I'm not supposed to be as intelligent as, as I am. I'm not supposed to be as technical as I am. I'm not supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be. And then when I am, they don't know where to put me. You know, I have figured out that it's a love me or hate me type situation. I'm usually pretty much respected when I show them who I am. And, I and so, you know, and I expect, I respect it, you know, but at the end of the day, I am don't talk ill about others because I don't want them doing that to me but at the same time you know when you show me who you are I believe you and that's my opinion so I I will still be around you do the things I need to do but it won't be no ha ha and kiki okay <laughs> business is business the rest is none um I love it I love it so what what are three things that you wish you would have known as a young black woman getting her degree what are three things that you wish you would have known prior to getting your doctorate prior to getting my doctorate i would have been more focused in my bachelor's because once mm. i got out of my bachelor's i got a degree every year after that <laughs> i got one in 2003 2004 2005 and then 2009 then you know then after that so uh, yeah and then there was two more after that but nevertheless, I, yes, I have six degrees in, in, in total. And so, um, ma'am, why do you, Lord have mercy, Jesus. See what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? You make people like me look bad. Okay. You make I'll answer us look your so question. basic. I will answer your question. So I've noticed that a lot of times I just kind of flow in things. You know, I found an interest in it. And then I flow with it, right? So after, okay. when I got my bachelor's degree, I moved to Colorado. And I was supposed to go to get my master's. And that's what I was going for. When I got there, my father was like, I'll take some rest. I said, oh, uh, I got there in October. I was enrolled by December. I, I said, that's your rest. I, I'm done. <laughs> I said, that's your rest. All right, so January... I started school December. I graduated the first time. I found out that if I took another class, I would have had two degrees two weeks before I graduate. I said, oh, okay. So I sat back a little bit and I said, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this class. That'd be stupid not to. So I went ahead and took the class. So in September the next year, I ended up with another degree. Um, then <laughs> uh, I sat out another year and I was like, oh, what is this? I don't know. I'm not doing what I want to do because I had a love for project management. So I said, mm. they said, you five more classes, you can go ahead and take your project management degree. Well, I was taking my project management degree. At least that's what I thought. He said, go ahead and do this survey for me. What the survey ended up being is an application for a doctoral program. <laughs> I'm at work. And they called me and said, oh, uh, so we need you to send us an essay. And I said, oh, excuse me for what? You applied for the doctor? I said, I did who? I said, that little. And then I remember that little man. <laughs> I said, all right, roll with it. I said, okay, if I pass this uh, essay with no rewrite, I'll go get a doctorate. They said, okay, uh, they wanted 1,800 words. I gave them 1,802. And uh, <laughs> I still remember this. 
And they said that they would uh, get back to me in a week. They called me in two days and said, you're in the program. I, and when can you start in January? I said, no, I'll be starting in April. Thank you very much. Got thanks to and They tried their best to get me in April. I was like, uh, in January. Nope. Starting April. April 2006, I started. June 2009, I finished. Wow. And that is how we wrote. Three years, three months. <laughs> right? Right? And that was done. <laughs> And then, you know, uh, the marketing degree happened because I'm sitting there teaching my fact of my student and two thirds of them were in the marketing program and I had one marketing class to my name. So wow. what did I do? I went and got a marketing degree so I could teach my students. In a year, I had that marketing degree. I was able to teach. And then I finally decided I was going to get a project management degree and I did not want another MBA. I said, so what can I do? They had an information systems in project management. And lo and behold, I ended up doing that. I did take a break in the middle of the program, literally one class out for two years. I sat there for two years and did not take this class because of the lows that I experienced at the last university. Wow. And I tried every, 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 everything to dodge taking that last class from that university. But at mm. the end of the day, I went and took that class class and in December 2018 I ended up with that degree. They mailed it to my house and I was wow. sitting there holding it and it's done. So it was six degrees. I thought about seven for the number of completion. You know, <laughs> he's still work he's still working on me on that. <laughs> I you know I'm I actually seeing this recurring I theme. I keep I'm I'm seriously I'm seeing this recurring theme uh, from the last few last few guests that I've had on the podcast, that you all are enrolled in universities again. One is working on his third doctorate. Another is working on now. He he actually uh, uh, he just finished he finished two postdocs and now he's doing a master's. Even though he already you know he completed it, but it's it's, it's in his other field. So I'm just like, and now I mean you're listen now. I will admit. I will admit that um, when I first completed my, my doctoral degree, I was looking at another degree um, because it was the program that I had, I thought I really, really, really wanted to go into. I, I wasn't trying to go into global leadership. I wasn't trying to go into organization development and management because my background is journalism. Obviously, like, you know, you see with all this. So my background is new media journalism. I love the production. I love the lights. I love the camera. I love the action, all of that. And I love the writing. And so the degree that I was uh, trying to go for was um, was uh, new media psychology because there's just so much that's just all involved in everything. Well, I never heard back from that university when I was applying. And so I went, I, you know, I applied to different places and then somehow, you know, God just allowed CTU to find me and be in my life and that's it. Do you know the week that I was graduating, the university that I applied to sent me a uh, sent me a welcome letter saying, congratulations, you've been accepted into the PhD for da 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 And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Is this a joke? I just finished. Three years, I haven't heard anything from you people. And now you sending me a message talking about congratulations. Honey, I didn't even know you. There must be a statue of limitations on that right there. But I still was so intrigued with the topic. I'm so yes. serious. I was so intrigued with the topic. And I'm like, oh, I want to do it. I want to do it. But then I moved to China. So like all of this, you know, and I'm just like, I, and I have it in my heart still, even when I was here in China over the years, I've still been in contact with the, with the program and just, you know, keeping tabs on them to see what they're doing. But now I'm just like, you know, I, it's where things are taking me now. I don't know, but I just keep hearing all of you talk about how you're still, you're getting another degree. You're doing another degree. And I'm like, ah, okay. Is that a distraction for me? Or like, cause I know that's still there, but so what would you say to someone who has already gotten a degree? They've already received a degree. They're working in their career fields, but they are, you know, maybe they do have a class or, or they have a program that they really, really do want to do. I mean, what, what would that be like? What do you, what would you say to them about that? Well, you know, when I was, cause you know, I'm still working on that, that idea of the seven, the number seven, cause I really honestly want an education degree. Cause I've been in education for forever and don't have a degree in education, you know? Yeah. And so I said, I'm interested in, you know, doing that. And, yeah. uh, but what would I say to that person? 
First off, I always say, you know, take a class, audit a class, you know, whatever. Well, I don't say audit because I want my credit, you know. Uh, that way, if I decide to use it, then, you know, <laughs> it's here. Apply you know, my credit. I have my credit. You know, you know I'm down with Okay. <laughs> you know, my... My boss tells me I collect achievements. I said, okay, well, if that's how you feel. <laughs> but, but, you know, I have to, you know, I done did the work. <laughs> he needs to come with something. <laughs> I need to exactly. see some return on the investment. But, exactly. you know, take the, cl- take the class. You know, find out if that is you. You know, you got five weeks out of your life, eight weeks out of your life to truly explore what you really want to do. True. And if it's not for you, okay, you still have some credits that are fresh. So when you decide you want to do it, uh, those could transfer over. You know, there's always a method to the madness. <laughs> and then, you know, there's certifications in a lot of things that you want to do. Yes. Now, yes. there's a certification for everything, honey. I got so many credit badges right now. It's amazing. Uh, you ain't got to tell me. <laughs> I know. I was looking on your website like, ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am, you are more certified than the Board of Health. You hear me? You <laughs> what? And I love it. I love it. You know, but try. You know, I always say you don't want to live in a world of woulda, coulda, shoulda. True. At least explore it and see. Because if it's the first thing you think about in the morning, the last thing you think about at night, it's usually for you. And if you've been thinking about it for years and years, you need to at least explore that thing. And but see. what about funding opportunities? You know, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Funding opportunities or or using your business because I mean, if, well, I don't know actually how things have changed now because of COVID, but you know, even right. with business, would you, would you say, no, use your business as a way to fund your you know, to fund your education. You can use or- that. And then, of course, if you are educator, uh, nine and a half times out of 10, the, uh, my benefit at my university was 10%. All, uh, you know, I paid 10% of the tuition at one university. And now this university, my tuition is free. So I have no excuse. No. But how did you come across that, though? Like, how did you come across? A, it's uh, No, seriously, because you have so many degrees right now. And I'm like, she had to ask the right questions. What are the questions that you that you ask to get these answers? Well, you know, when I'm looking at things, uh, prime example, how I found out that I just needed one more class. I'm like, are these degrees congruent? Like, can I take uh-huh. these these classes from here and apply them over here? And they were like, yes, ma'am. In fact, it looks like you're just missing an accounting class and you would have had another degree. Wow. I'm like, well, wh- who was going to tell me that? And, well, right. And Nobody's you know. <laughs> telling us that. And so they were like, oh, yeah, well, you you know, if you would have came in and no, 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 no. You had me sit. Y'all had me sitting here a couple of times. You know, yeah. this could have came up in conversation, but that's all right. It's coming up now. And you know what? No problem. I can come back and take that one class. I'm not been out of shape about it, you know, because if I want to do it. It's just one class. Now, if y'all were talking about five or six classes, then, you know, that would have been another type of conversation. It's one. Got it. (laughs) You know, (laughs) you know, I'm not going to be bent about that. But, you know, asking those types of questions, asking if, you know, especially if you have several interests that you are looking at and you can't make the decision, do these classes fall over into that one? And then that way I could just add these in here and I have a dual degree. You know, that's yeah. a question to ask. Another thing is a lot of them, in addition to my degrees, they came with business certifications, graduate certificates. And I'm sure that uh, if you went to CTL, you have a few of them there too. Yeah. So with... uh. You know, so each set of group of classes came with a, as another certification. So it's like, OK, do I just need the certification? Because, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you need 18 uh, credit hours in order to teach yeah. in the discipline you're supposed to teach in. So sometimes you just need to go get the 18 credit hours to do what you need to do. So that's a thought as well. Just adding that to the transcript. So you can just get the 18 hours and all the things you want to do and then call it a wrap. So those are questions so, that you need to ask. And then you end up with business that? certificates instead, you know, in addition to. Now, what about what about if, if there's someone who's listening right now or watching on YouTube right now and they're saying, well, I didn't know all of this, you know, when I graduated. So 
how how can I even go back and find out about this, you know, the certifications and things like that? Like, what do I do? How do I find that out? Well, uh, what I did was I went back up there because I was like, I want this project management degree. So I went back up there and I talked to because I had been out of school probably a year, two years at that point. Um, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to take five classes and get my project management degree and, and, and you know, cause I just felt better when I was in school. I'm, I'm a school person. I'd love to, you know, okay. and so okay. I felt better when I was in school, but of course, uh, the advisor realized that I probably need to be elevating myself and not just taking five classes. And I ended up in the doctor program, you know, he knew oh. that I wasn't hearing that. So he, he had to go a different route. And, uh -huh. and to and this day, we, it, basically. yeah, 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 yeah. And to this day, we're still in communication. And I did thank him, you know, because this has definitely served me well. But mm -hmm. I go go up there and explore the options. Say, OK, here's my transcript. You know, have your paperwork. What can I do with this right now that can take me to my next level? I'm interested in this. What can I do off of this? How, what's mm -hmm. the statute of credits? I know that most people say 10 years. So a lot of the stuff that I'm working with, it's going to be left at the wayside. So uh, I do have a few that are fresh, so I can still use those. But for the most part, uh -huh. most of the stuff I have is dead. So you need to know where you're working <laughs> I'm just being honest, you know. This is how we live here. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but she said most of the yeah. stuff I'm working with is dead. <laughs> but you know, it serves me well as far as teaching. They all the 18 credit hours are there. Let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as me trying to use it to turn it into credits to take shave some stuff off, usually, um, my stuff is null and void. But Yours may not be, or they mm -hmm. may have a different uh, statute of limitation. So go yeah. ahead and explore those possibilities because at the end of the day, you don't know what you don't know, and you're definitely True. not doing it if you don't ask. True. True. Wow. Now, see, here, I asked her what did she, you know, what she wished she knew before having a terminal degree, and now she just taught us what we wish we knew before having a terminal degree without us even knowing that we needed to know it. So, I mean, that right there, that's uh, that's beyond powerful. Like, I'm so serious. Like, I, I, have, I have absolutely no doubt that someone listening to this right now are getting like so many ideas about, you know, certifications or, um, or even continue with their degrees. And I love what you said about the fact that like, if it's something that you, you know, you continuously dream about, like you go to bed thinking about it, you wake up thinking about it all throughout the day, you're thinking about it. Um, then that's something that you should probably either find a way to, you know, get certified for it or, or definitely find a way to go back to school for it, you know, go back to school for it. Um, so, and, and I'm actually wondering, I'm like, well, are there education programs available now? Or, you know, things available now for people who might be interested in doing those things um, it's in the States? Oh, yes, yes, yes. There are uh, plenty. Um, a lot of people are going to the online schools. The school that I teach for is an online school. Uh, and we have mm -hmm. a lot of different programs. We cater to uh, military. Well, we're a military-based school. You know, it started with military and, you know, we've branched out since then. But um, I know that there are plenty of things that could be done with that we do and other mm -hmm. schools do as well. So yes, definitely uh, go in, go into it. Um, I have a friend that I call the educational encyclopedia and he uh, recently got his second doctorate. You know, you should definitely have him on. He's a treat. And, okay. <laughs> and so he would definitely be a great resource for that. You know, that that's definitely okay. his wheelhouse. But okay. yes, they definitely have a lot of things in the States where that could help them. Well, con make sure you definitely connect us. I would love to. Yeah. Andre Leaders, would you like to have uh, uh, Dr. Mysterious in the Leaders Lab? We would definitely <laughs> love to have him on the Leaders Lab podcast. So yes, you. And that's another thing that I really admire about Dr. Fincher. She is a networker. But the thing is, I love the fact that if you're not watching the video version of the podcast, then you won't know this, but she, she actually is an introvert. 
Like, like she's actually, <laughs> she's actually an introvert. If you, if you actually go to her website, which is, uh, I'll, I'll put it on the screen for you. But if you go to her website, she has, uh, she has her own merchandise, right? And I was looking through, uh, I was looking through her products that she has and she has shirts about being introverted. Like, and I just, I love, I love it so much. I was like, she is introverted and proud, honey. Like, you know, oh, yes. she is just, she is, she's okay with that. But, um, but, but, you know, so she's an introvert, but gosh, she does an amazing job with putting, connecting people. Like, I feel like she does such a great job with connecting people. And you can see that through her summits and all of those things. So actually, I want to ask you about that. This is a little selfish question here. So Thank I want to ask you about that. How how do you navigate? Because I you are absolutely, um, some people call it a multi-hyphenate. I call it multi-passionate. You are definitely a multi-passionate entrepreneur um, and an academic. That's the thing that I believe that, you know, ties us in and connects us and, and, um, a few weeks ago, I had Dr. Christopher Linsky, who was also a graduate of CTU um, mm -hmm. on and, and he said something. I said, I'm about to turn that into a movement. I will credit him, but I'm going to steal it. But he said something. He was like, you know, I'm not just an academic. I'm, there's so much more to me. And that mm -hmm. right there was my confirmation uh, about just the different turns and things that are happening in my life from you know, being in academia, but also, you know, I have a travel, I have a travel brand, you know, I also have a health and wellness brand, and then I have my leadership brand. So I have all of these things. And at first I was trying to mesh them all together because I felt like they needed to be one thing so people could understand the, the variety of me. And that was mm -hmm. such an epic fail, such an epic <laughs> fail. It was like, no, you are you in each one of these avenues in each one of these sectors right. just be you in those sectors and you know he was talking about that too but you qualify for that you're an academic my gosh are you an academic like if nobody if you've been listening to this episode you know she is an academic from start to finish but she's also a businesswoman she's a marketer she's like i mean she's a minister too she has all of these things so how how would you encourage or motivate someone who they're like, man, you know, I, I have the academic part down or I'm trying to get into that, mm -hmm. but I still have goals and dreams like about building a business and, or, you know, making money from my passion and all of that. Like what advice would you give to them? It is so amazing. I would say make strong connections that helps. And then also be true to yourself. As far as just making strong connections, um, I went to school uh, and I had a cohort. We were cohort seven. And uh, cohort seven, I still talk to most of them. And then I also met cohort eight, nine, and 10. Okay. And so my uh, Dr. Mysterious is in co was in cohort nine. Uh, he didn't finish okay. with us, but... He was in cohort nine. And, um, and then, of course, I met some other people. Well, someone in my cohort seven, I brought him on. And then his wife ended up graduating for CTU. And so I brought them on to teach at my campus in Huntsville. And then when I left the university, I ended up working for him at the uh, other university, at, <sighs> at this new university that I'm at now. And I was like, See, we watch out for each other. You know, I, I watch some of these academics looking for two and three years for jobs. You know, I think my whole transition time was three months. <laughs> you know, I mean, now that I think about it, it was literally three months. And I said, you know, I needed that three months to get past all of the um, negative uh, energies and things, you know, need to get that yes. flushed out and everything because I don't want to bring that into a new environment. Um, yes. You know, that that's part of those lows. <laughs> okay. Yes, 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 uh, yes. But at the end of the day, making those connections. Then being true to you. Uh, I mm -hmm. had a lot of lows because I was true to me. I am not necessarily the biggest game player. I'm a team okay. lead, I'm a team player, but I'm not a game player. I hate bait and switch. 
I hate when people are sitting up there smiling in my face and throwing rocks behind and hiding their hands. I'm not that person either. And so I am that person that will call you and say, I see that rock. And so that would get me in trouble a lot. Because <laughs> I would see rock. that rock. <laughs> Okay. Huh? I see drop the it. rock before you before you catch one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. Drop it. Right. Right. You know, I had no problem throwing uh dropping the boulder in my, in your face. No problems. I love it. <laughs> very very love clear. It. I'm always very clear. But the point is you got to know who and who you are. And when you are dealing, you know, running around with fake ones, you know, mm. you end up starting to get those characteristics. And yeah. so, <laughs> and so I had to make sure that I wasn't around fake ones. And, you know, I've noticed that the fake ones eventually drop. They eventually fall off because you're no longer serving them. So they fall off. You just give them a little time. They fall off by themselves. You don't even have to call them out. Okay. Wow. And so who... You know, so these people that are saying that they're more than an academic, you know, you're speaking about my T-shirts. I have a T-shirt that see see past the title and know the person. Come on now. I love it. I and love you know, it. Because, you know, when you would think that I became a whole new person when they added doctor to my name. Oh, Dr. Finch. Dr. Finch. You know, you would think that Dr. Finch and Ikena are two different people. They have been the same person for quite some time. <laughs> but, you know, Dr. Finch is real clear. Ikena uh, is a whole nother entity. Ikena is probably the business person. Ikena okay. is the creative, whereas Dr. Finch is the go get it. Ikena is the introvert. Okay. So when okay. I do need to perform, I'm Dr. Finch all day long. Yeah, 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 you know, you know, kind of like Beyonce and Sasha Fierce, you know, you got to uh-huh. do that kind of thing, right, <laughs> you know, yeah. so that, you know, I do, I, so I guess Dr. Finch is my Sasha Fierce, but at okay. the end of the day, you know, because introverts need that, you know, that persona, like what to push out and what things, Yeah. but at the end of the day, it's just pushing out what's already in there, you know, yeah. you're pushing out what's already in there, and however you need to get it out, you get it out because yeah. somebody's in need of it. And wow. and so when you're sitting there holding back, trying to be the model professor or the model entrepreneur or the model writer or the model this or the model that, and then not and realizing that the unique parts of what people are falling in love with, you yes. keep on wasting time doing that. Keep on wasting time because, you know, the ideal is in the textbook. And academics, we know that what goes on in that textbook and what goes on in real life are two different things. So different. So And guess what? Yeah. What? No, go ahead. You said, and guess what? Go ahead. And the good thing about it is when they leave your class, they remember the real life situations and not the textbook. Absolutely. I 1000% agree with that. So how have you, how have you been able to navigate then your multiple passions and being an academic? Oh, that was different. Because when I was at my first university, I really didn't get to talk about entrepreneurial passions and things like that because, you know, everything was a conflict of interest. They didn't yeah, want you to yeah, do yeah. nothing else. They didn't want you to do nothing else. Yeah. Now, when I got yeah. to this new university, honey, I put it out there. I said, look, here are my social media handles. Follow them. You can see everything that I'm doing. I really don't care. To this yeah. date, my provost, uh, the president emeritus, the provost, uh, my bosses, the other deans, they all follow my social media handles. They know exactly what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. In fact, when we have awards, things, and I win an award, my provost say, follow her on social media. She has such great stuff. I love it. I love so, it. So when you are you and you're working in your greatness and your gifting, and because yes. they saw that in me, they went over to the website. They saw the other things they're doing. That book that you talked about that I did in 2016, why did I do mm-hmm. five different presentations on the information in that book for the university, including a presentation for the deans and directors and provosts? So, wow. So no conflict of interest. I'm just doing me. And I'm helping others it. be great. 
So I love yes. That. So when you were saying, do they ever mesh together? They do mesh together eventually, but they all stand alone and they come together. We can't push them together because they all are different entities. What we can do is leverage upon each one of them and make them like building blocks. I use them okay. like building blocks to build my next strong tower. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, this has been good. You you guys are actually going to see more of uh, Dr. Akina Finch. She don't know it yet, but you will. <laughs> but now she knows. <laughs> you guys are going to see more from us because I am, you know, I'm, I'm going to see if we can do a big event. You know, even though I live in China, I'm going to see if we can do some type of big event in 2022 um, and, you know, do something together. I mean, she's just, she's so powerful and I really need her to rub off on moi. Okay. So, I mean, just everything that she has going on, it's, it's, it's very impressive. Um, it's, it's amazing. And I'm, I'm so proud. I'm super duper proud. Um, so I am going to ask you my question of the lab. Okay. My question okay. of the lab as we are. We're wrapping things up. Okay. What is one characteristic that you believe every leader should possess? One question that you believe every leader should possess? Understanding. Ah, because okay. everybody is different and you need to see the person and not see what you're trying to get done. Because if mm. you find their love language or their way of working, and you yeah. tailor it to that, then you're gonna get the moon and the stars. But if you're constantly browbeating them and trying to turn their square peg into a round one, you are going to get all kinds of misery and low morale. So wow. having the understanding to reach out and find out how they soar yeah. is gonna be a game changer. I love it, understanding, and I agree. I agree. I love it. Uh, so how can everyone get, if they want to connect with you, um, they want to be among your, you know, your colleagues, your bosses, your, your leaders, they want to follow you on social media. They want to be a part of the, the Finch tribe. How can they, how can they connect with you on social media? Well, they can find me on IkenaFinch.com and that's A-I-K-Y-N-A-F-I-N-C-H right there on the screen. Okay. And you can also go to Technically Intuitive. That's my new brand. That's my new trademark, baby. She's almost done with the trademarking okay. process. And okay. uh, I do have a membership site that I'm getting ready to launch for Black Friday. I'm bringing my membership site back. And so okay. it's the Technically Intuitive Toolbox. And you can find me on Clubhouse every Saturday for networking and, okay. uh, and tech tips. And then, of course, you have my Facebook, my Instagram, my Pinterest, all the things are D-R-A-D okay. Finch. Yes. Yeah. All the things are D-R-A-D Finch. You'll find me everywhere. And I just... I love it. I can't wait to meet you. I love it. And make sure when you do meet up with Dr. Finch or you connect with her on social media or you follow her, whatever it is, make sure you let her know that you you came in contact with her or you found out from uh, about her at the Leaders Lab. Uh, make sure you say, hey, Dr. Charity TV from the Leaders Lab told me that you are a great person I needed to connect with. I heard I heard your interview, I heard your segment, and uh, I, I followed your wisdom, so uh, please do that. And don't forget that you can also connect with me all over social media at Dr. Charity TV. You see, we women, we like to keep it simple. You know, we're mm -hmm. not gonna give you 12 different handles. You know what I'm saying? We're just gonna give you one at Dr. Charity TV all over, at Dr. A.D. Finch all over social media. And that's what it is. So Dr. Finch, I just want to say thank you so much again for coming by the Leaders Lab today. I, I appreciate you being here. It is my pleasure. And thank you for having me. And thank you for letting me be the first woman doctor in the series. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. And we have, we do have others. We do have others. But like I said, when you, when you about to be the first one, you got to come with it hard. You know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta come in and bring in a heavy hitter. And I, I'm, I'm just so really, honestly, I am honored that you agreed to be on the Leaders Lab podcast again. So thank you so much for being here with us. And, um, everyone, thank you so much for, for rocking with us on this 49th episode of the Leaders Lab podcast with the Dr. Akina 
Finch. Uh, I I hope that you got a lot out of this. You know I was over here taking notes, okay? Uh, but I hope you got as much out of this as I have, if not more. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week for the 50th episode. Can you believe that? That's crazy. I look forward to seeing you guys next week in the lab. Thank you for listening to the Leaders Lab podcast. Visit our website at www.drcharitytv.com.